Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you how to achieve the best bokeh. Rule number one, use the best focal length and aperture ratio. Well, what is a focal length and aperture ratio? It's very easy to calculate. You just divide your focal length by the maximum aperture of your lens. In this case, if you use a 300mm 2.8 lens, 300 divides 2.8 equals 107. If you use a 600mm lens, 600 divides 4 equals 150. So 600mm f4 has the best aperture focal length ratio. So with no lens, you can get the same result as 600 f4. Rule number two, use the maximum focal length as possible. When you use the maximum focal length, this means your background is going to be closer to the frame. Let's say there is a 100mm f1 lens and you have a 200mm f2 lens. As you see, the aperture ratio is the same. But 200mm f2 is going to give you a cleaner background. It magnifies, so the background is closer and it fills the frame more. Rule number three, use as large a sensor camera you can. Let's say you're using a full format camera and you're using 300mm 2.8. If you use the same uh, lens with a crop camera, let's say with D500, your 300mm is going to give you the field of view around 450mm. You'll still be at 2.8, but you can get closer to your subject to get the same frame. That's why it's going to give you even more bokeh. Rule number four, get close. So the closer you are to your subject, the more background is going to be isolated. Rule number five, get low. When you get low, you're going to be in the same level as the ground. The ground is going to start first, you know, melting, and then it's going to get crisp and sharp at the selected focus that you chose. So it is going to give you an extra bokeh, especially when you're shooting animals and the grass is going to be in front of you. And this grass is going to melt down and it's almost going to join with the background. Rule number six, choose your background. I realized that when I was shooting outside, shooting the narrow streets, I get a better bokeh effect. Actually, what's so magical about the bokeh is that it gives us the three-dimensional look. That's why the bokeh looks actually not only pleasing, but also makes your image more alive. Rule number seven, your subject's distance from the background should be as far as possible. Let's say you're shooting a model. If your model is leaning against a wall, um, the wall is going to be very sharp. I mean, it's almost going to be impossible to get a blur on the wall. But if you move your subject further from the wall because of the distance, and it's going to give you a better bokeh. Rule number eight, lean on a wall. Well, remember I said, don't get your subject close to the wall, but this is also depending on your angle of your shooting. If you also lean against the wall, shoot from the wall to the subject, then you're going to have the foreground melted away. You're going to have your subject sharp and the background is also going to melt. So this is going to give you even more bokeh. Rule number nine, use less contrast setting in your camera. I actually have to admit that I recently realized I was usually using the standard picture style in my camera. But when I turned this to the flat or neutral, flat being the best one, there's almost no contrast in the image. And this makes the transition areas of the bokeh even you know, more pleasing. So I use flat to get the best bokeh um, from my image. Rule number 10, use soft light. When you use harsh light on your subject or on the background or both, there's going to be more contrast. So, Bokeh is more pleasing when there is less contrast. So the rule I explained earlier also applies to this. So use a soft light to get a more pleasing bokeh. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.